This one goes out to all our number loving listeners. We heard your call for a deep dive on the square root spiral. And let me tell you, the intrigue is mutual. Yeah, it's like a gateway spiral, right? Looks can be deceiving because this seemingly simple pattern unlocks some seriously mind-bending mathematical secrets. Okay, you've definitely piqued my curiosity. What's the big secret hiding within those ever-expanding squares? Well, to crack the code of the square root spiral, we gotta start with the foundation of any good spiral. Numbers themselves. Makes sense. Number spirals, they're practically cousins, right? More like siblings. And these siblings, well, some just don't play well together. Our source material dives into this fascinating concept called incommensurable magnitudes, and that's where things get really interesting. Incommensurable magnitudes. Okay, I'm going to need a translation here. That sounds a tad intimidating for a casual deep dive. Fair enough. Let's ditch the jargon and try a little thought experiment. Imagine a perfectly drawn square. Now focus on one of its diagonals. Got it. Square, diagonal, I'm visualizing it. Now, if we say the side of our square represents the number one, that diagonal throws a bit of a wrench in things. How so? Well, it can't be represented as a whole number or even a simple fraction. It's like it exists outside our normal number system. Whoa, it's like a rogue number defying the rules. Precisely. The ancient Greeks called these numbers incommensurable, meaning they can't be expressed as a ratio of two whole numbers. It totally threw them for a loop. I can imagine. It's like finding a missing piece of a puzzle, but the piece doesn't actually fit anywhere. So how does this all connect back to our square root spiral? Patience, my friend. We're getting there. This incommensurability thing, it's the secret sauce that makes the square root spiral so fascinating. Intriguing. Okay, I'm hooked. Tell me more. So this discovery of incommensurable numbers, it actually sent shockwaves through ancient Greek mathematics. A mathematician named Theodorus really dug into this and discovered a whole bunch of these rule-breaking numbers. Like mathematical rebels hiding in plain sight. Exactly. And it all started with that pesky diagonal we were talking about. The square root of 2, which represents that diagonal, is just the beginning. Theodorus found that the square roots of 3, 5, 6, and a whole bunch of others were also incommensurable with one. So it wasn't just a one-time thing, it was a pattern. It's like these numbers decided to form their own exclusive club. And the entry fee. Yeah. Not being expressible as a ratio of two whole numbers. You know, I've always been told to embrace my irrational side, but th this is next level. But seriously, what does it even mean for a number to be not a ratio? Like, how do I even wrap my head around that? Think of it this way. You can divide a pizza into equal slices, right? Mm -hmm. Halves, thirds, you name it. But try dividing that pizza using the square root of two. It's already lost. It just won't work. No matter how hard you try, those slices will never quite fit together perfectly. Okay, I'm starting to get it. These incommensurable numbers, they're like the rebels of the number world. They don't follow the rules, but they're essential to the bigger picture. A perfect analogy. And guess what? That square root spiral we're diving into, it gives us a front row seat to the wild world of these rule breakers. Okay, you've officially blown my mind. I need to know more about this spiral. Picture this. You start with a line segment, your basic one. Now build a square on that segment and draw its diagonal. That diagonal, representing the square root of two, becomes the side of your next square. Keep repeating, and bam, you've got yourself a square root spiral. So we're literally building a spiral out of these rebellious numbers. Exactly. Each diagonal you draw adds another layer of incommensurability to the mix. And here's where it gets really interesting. Theodorus didn't just stop at realizing these square roots were incommensurable with the number one. He discovered they were actually incommensurable with each other, too. Well, wait a minute. So it's not just that they're all in this exclusive not-a-ratio club, but they can't even agree on a common denominator amongst themselves. It's like trying to find a universal language that everyone agrees on. But each number speaks its own unique dialect. Take the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, for example. They're both irrational, but you'll never find a perfect way to relate them using a simple ratio. So we're not just talking about individual numbers here, but like a whole interconnected web of incommensurables all spiraling out of control. It's like a mathematical mosh pit. More like a perfectly choreographed dance, actually. Each number has its place, its role to play in this grand, irrational ballet. And our source material even calls out some specific examples just to really drive this point home. Oh yeah, let's hear them. Give me some concrete examples of these numerical rebels refusing to play nice. All right, how about this? The square root of two and the square root of three. Total oddballs, right? You'll never be able to squeeze them into a neat little ratio. And it's not just those two. We're talking square root of 20, 47, and 13. The list goes on. 
Okay, I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed by all this irrationality. Are there any, like, normal numbers that can hang out in this spiral? Or is it just chaos all the way down? Don't worry, it's not all anarchy. Even in the midst of all these incommensurable magnitudes, there are still pairs of numbers that get along swimmingly, that find that perfect ratio, that common ground. Ew, that's reassuring. So it's not a total free-for-all in the world of numbers. Exactly. It's all about balance, right? Mm. Our source material actually highlights a few examples of these harmonious relationships, these numbers that actually enjoy being seen together. All right, spill the key. I need some order after all that irrationality. Okay, check this out. The square root of 2 and the square root of 8. Now, at first glance, they might not seem like they have much in common. Yeah, totally different vibes. Right. But trust me on this, they actually have a really nice, clean ratio. Hold up, you're telling me there's a secret handshake between those two? I need details. It all boils down to the fact that both of those square roots share a common factor, a hidden connection that allows them to simplify down to a nice, neat ratio. Ah, so they're not so different after all. It's like finding out your arch nemesis has the same taste in music as you. Unexpected, but kind of cool. Exactly. And the fun doesn't stop there. Our source material throws another curveball, the square root of 12 and the square root of 243. Now those two sound like they belong on opposite ends of the number line. Right. But even they can be linked together by a simple, elegant ratio. It's all about finding those hidden connections, those underlying patterns that tie everything together. This is making me want to dust off my old math textbook and start exploring. Mm -hmm. But before I disappear down that rabbit hole, maybe we should shift gears and talk about another spiral that caught my eye in our source material the logarithmic spiral. It's like the artsy cousin of the square root spiral, right? You got it. The logarithmic spiral or the equiangular spiral, if you want to get fancy, is all about balance, harmony, that kind of effortless elegance that just draws you in. Ooh, I'm picturing a perfectly formed seashell or something. Exactly. It's all about the angles. In a logarithmic spiral, the angle between any line drawn from the center to a point on the spiral and the tangent, at that point, it's always the same. Okay, you lost me a bit at tangent, but I think I get the gist. It's like yeah. this perfect balance of expansion and rotation, right? Precisely. And what's really cool is that this elegant spiral isn't just some abstract mathematical concept. Mm. It pops up everywhere in art and design, sometimes in the most unexpected places. Really? So you're saying artists are secretly math geniuses? Well, let's just say they have a knack for incorporating mathematical principles into their work even if they might not realize it. I love that. Math hiding in plain sight. But give me an example. Where do we see these logarithmic spirals in art? Oh, they're all over the place. You know those intricate Roman and Greek rosettes? Those beautifully symmetrical designs with all the repeating patterns? Yeah, totally. They're mesmerizing. Well, guess what? A lot of them are based on the principles of the logarithmic spiral. No way! So those ancient artists were secretly spiral masters. It's more like they intuitively understood the aesthetic appeal of this natural flowing form. It's like math whispering beauty into existence. I love it. And get this, our source material actually walks us through how to construct one of these logarithmic rosettes step by step. Wait, really? Are we talking like a mathematical paint by numbers situation here? Sort of. Imagine starting with a bunch of concentric polygons, squares, pentagons, hexagons, you name it, all nested inside each other like a mathematical bullseye. Okay, I'm kind of visualizing it. Now here's the magic part. By connecting specific points on those polygons, you create a network of similar triangles, and when you connect the dots, da voila, a logarithmic spiral emerges. It's like origami, but with triangles and spirals. That's so cool. It's all about harnessing the power of geometric progression to create this beautiful, expanding pattern. And this is how they made those ancient rosettes. Talk about a mathematical mic drop. And the best part is, it's not just a rigid formula. By playing around with the size and position of those initial polygons, you can tweak how tightly or loosely that spiral unwinds. It's like a mathematical choose-your-own-adventure. You can create an infinite number of spirals, all based on the same underlying principles. It really speaks to the elegance and flexibility of mathematical thinking, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. But hold on, we can't forget about the other spiral. Our source material mentioned the Archimedean spiral. Now this one sounds a bit more, how should I say, down to earth than the logarithmic spiral. It's definitely a bit more grounded, you could say that. Imagine this, you're walking away from a lamppost at a constant speed, but at the same time, we're also walking around it. The path you trace, that's an Archimedean spiral. 
Okay, I can totally visualize that. It's like watching a dog on a leash trying to chase a squirrel, constant motion, but always tethered to that central point. Okay, so we've got our slightly rebellious square root spiral, our elegant logarithmic spiral friend, and now this more, let's say, structured Archimedean spiral. Are these spirals all just doing their own thing in the mathematical universe, or is there some kind of connection between them? That's the really cool part. They're not as different as you might think. Let's bring back our rule-breaking square root spiral for a sec. As it grows, as those squares get bigger and bigger, it starts to look a lot like our friend, the Archimedean spiral. Wait, seriously, the spiral built on those unique numbers starts to resemble a simple walk in the park. How does that even happen? It's all about what happens as you keep going, keep expanding towards infinity. As those squares in the square shore spiral get larger and larger, the distance between the spiral arms starts to approach a very special number, and that number is pi. Hold on, you're blowing my mind here. Pi, as in the circle's best friend, pi. What does pi have to do with spirals? It all comes down to how these spirals grow. Remember how the square root spiral uses those diagonals and the logarithmic spiral keeps that angle constant? Those features create a pattern of change that, if you zoom out, starts to look a lot like the smooth expansion of the Archimedean spiral. And that smooth expansion, that's where pi sneaks in. Okay, I think I see the connection now. But earlier you mentioned something about the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence. Those are connected to spirals too, right? How does that fit into all of this? It's all connected, like pieces of a giant mathematical jigsaw puzzle. The golden ratio, much like pi, has a knack for showing up in the most unexpected places. It's all about proportion how things grow and relate to each other. And that's where the Fibonacci sequence comes in. Each number is just the sum of the two before it. Right. One, one, two, three, five, eight, and so on. I remember seeing that sequence visualized as a spiral. Exactly. And that Fibonacci spiral isn't just a pretty picture. It's actually a really good approximation of a logarithmic spiral. Whoa. So even in something as simple as adding numbers together, this elegant spiral pattern emerges. It's like the universe has this secret obsession with spirals. And get this, our source material talks about something really mind boggling, something that happens when you zoom in on the square root spiral, like infinitely close. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. What happens? Imagine shrinking yourself down to an impossibly small size and looking at that square root spiral. What you'd find is that up close, it actually starts to look a lot like a logarithmic spiral. No way. So even in this seemingly chaotic spiral, there's this hidden echo of the logarithmic spiral. It's like a mathematical fractal, mind officially blown. And that brings us to a pretty profound question our source material leaves us pondering. What if these spirals are more than just, you know, math on a page? What if, and hear me out, what if their presence in everything, from seashells to those massive swirling galaxies, is pointing to something fundamental about, well, reality itself? You're saying spirals could hold the key to understanding the universe. That's a pretty big what if. It's a tantalizing thought, isn't it? Maybe these spirals, with their elegance, their hidden connections, maybe they offer a new way of looking at and understanding the world around us. Well, I know I'm never going to look at a spiral the same way again. Thank you to our amazing listeners for sending in this mind-blowing deep dive suggestion. We hope you enjoyed the exploration as much as we did. And remember, keep those curious minds buzzing, keep asking questions, and most importantly, keep exploring the world of numbers and beyond. You never know what incredible connections you might find.